it's a mistake by BMW. I think this, this M3 should have had, well, you know. Now that's a rear end. What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max and today is a good day because we are taking the BMW M3 competition G80 and this car we have borrowed at BMW van Laarhoven in Eindhoven so big thanks to them for uh, getting us this car so quickly. Uh, today I'm going to show you around it, show you the spec we've got it in. Uh, we've covered a lot of BMW M3 stuff already so I'm going to keep it relatively uh, compact this review, uh, walk around it, take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn blast. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to receive updates when we upload a new video. And you can also check out our store ignitioncollection.com where we have a number of products, namely our own watch brand with Swiss made watches. This is one of them. Uh, we also sell the Draggy GPS performance box you see in the acceleration videos there. And if you would like to buy a watch, well, what the hell, let's, let's throw a discount code in there because I'm so happy with the new M3. If you use the code M3G80, you will get a 10% discount on any of our watches. So go check it out in the top right corner if you like. So let's take a look at this car, Brooklyn Grey is this car, this color, Brooklyn Grau uh, in German, Brooklyn Grey. It's very close to Nardo Grey, I would say, but it does suit this car very well. Uh, we of course have the massive new kidneys. I, I mean, I don't know, I, I really like them. E ever since I saw them in real life, I absolutely love them. I think the car looks so aggressive, it looks so different from, for example, an M340i, and I really, really like that. And I think you will change your mind as well. If you see this car on the road, I think a lot of you will change your mind because it's just a car that works in real life, but it doesn't really work on photos. This car also has the carbon fiber exterior package. You can see that because it's got these air intakes or air inlets in the front bumper in carbon fiber. Uh, the grill is black, of course, so are these uh, lower parts. And we also have the competition wheels, of course, these are 19 inch at the front, 20 inch at the back, 275 section tires at the front, which is really wide, um, and 285 at the rear. This car has the M compound brakes with the black brake calipers, as you can see. Uh, so no ceramic brakes on this car, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the side blades on the M3, don't understand why this is I, this is really cheap plastic, don't really like that. I think it should have been gloss black or probably carbon fiber with the exterior package. That would have been much cooler. M3 competition badge, Van Laarhoven Eindhoven. Uh, this car is for sale there, That's it's their demo car. So if you're interested in having a BMW M3 competition quickly in a great spec, go check it out. Carbon fiber mirror caps, carbon fiber roof. Uh, the mirror caps are part of the exterior package. The roof is standard, as you probably know. And the rear. Hallelujah. Now that's a rear end, right? I absolutely love it. I think this is one of the best parts of the car. They have done this so well, the wide body at the rear. And you can see that with the M3, especially because you have those rear doors, that this is so much wider. That's really, really cool. We've got a black side skirt as well there. And uh, the carbon fiber diffuser for the exterior package. And the rest is black, carbon fiber spoiler. And if you sit behind it, you can actually see that these two tips line up with the fins on the roof, these ones. That's actually pretty cool. So I guess it serves a purpose, which is great. Alrighty, let's take a look at the engine. The beating heart, the S58 twin turbocharged inline six, straight six, which is a freaking powerhouse. It is so, so powerful and it just works really well in this car. Unfortunately, we don't have the beautiful carbon fiber strut anymore. Uh, we had in the F80, the previous car, but 
it is much stiffer at the front and the, the, the bracing in here has a big part in that uh, as well as the floor underneath. It's all connected at the front end to give the front end a really stiff character or make it really stiff to give the front end a very nice uh, front end. But this engine is actually, it's based on the B58 of course you find in an M340i. But it's actually quite different because a couple of examples, it's got uh, bigger different turbochargers, two bigger monoscroll turbochargers. It's also got the crank of a BMW M4 GT3 car and it's got a 3D printed cylinder head uh, to be able to cope with the injection of 350 bar. So that's how one of the reasons why uh, this car has 60 horsepower more than the S55, the previous M3 engine. Uh, this has 510 horsepower and 650 newton meters of torque, which is absolutely mental. It is so powerful, this, this engine. And it really does feel quite different from a B58. So, on the inside, uh, this is actually quite funny because uh, I don't know who specced this car but apparently they didn't want the carbon ceramic brakes because as I said we've got these new M compound brakes um, but we have a track pack here in the Netherlands I don't know if that's for every country but we have it which includes the carbon fiber interior the carbon fiber bucket seats um, the, the M drivers package M drive professional um, a couple of other things I think, but that's the most important, and the carbon ceramic brakes. But this car has everything the track pack has, except for the ceramic brakes. So, I don't know, maybe it's intentional that they just didn't want the ceramics on here, uh, but I thought that was quite funny. I sat down too early, because... <sighs> Look at that. That is absolutely gorgeous. Man, those two seats here, it is beautiful. Uh, if you have a, a very annoying passenger, they can really poke you in the kidneys or in the neck here. Um, but man, they look awesome. I would definitely recommend going for these seats because the seating position is also freaking perfect. You can sit so low. They're actually lower than the regular sports seats. So if you get these seats, you can sit lower. And my God, the driving position in this car is just ridiculously spot on it's probably the best i've experienced in a in a road car it's absolutely crazy and you can see them they are they are super hardcore and they have uh, holes for a four-point harness as well but they are not uncomfortable so they're not hard they're just really well sculpted and you sit just perfectly and you also have this little holder here for, well, you know, <laughs> whatever that is. Um, yeah, they are gorgeous and awesome. I also love this color, this orange leather, orange interior. We also have that on our M3. So uh, this is pretty much the interior we also have. So I'm really stoked to see that in the flesh. Let's go for a drive. I'll start it up. So you guys can hear it. Now the sound, it has gotten a little bit less extreme compared to the F80s of yore. So the, especially the first ones with an M performance exhaust were absolutely ridiculous. This is a lot less impressive, especially revving it. But when you drive it, it actually sounds pretty decent. But still, there is some uh, room for improvement. So if you would get an aftermarket exhaust, I would uh, understand. And the main reason for that is that they have developed this engine with this exhaust with an OPF. So they could incorporate that in the development of the car. And the last couple of years of the previous M3, they just had to throw an OPF on there and it just didn't really work. All right, so... Um, M1 is my setting for driving towards the Autobahn, which is traction control all the way off, gearbox in the most ferocious setting, Sport Plus for the engine, Sport for the suspension, Comfort for the steering and Sport for the brakes, which is also new, the fact that you can configure your brakes.
Now, the moment you get into this car, throw it into a corner for the first time and accelerate out of it, you are sold on this car. I have to admit, before this car came out, I was a bit worried about the weight and about the fact that I was a bit scared it might feel like an M340i Plus, something a bit too civilized, a bit too polished. Well, there's none of that. The power feels absolutely relentless. It's aggressive. And it is ridiculously fast. It feels so freaking powerful. And the main thing, the main difference between this car and the predecessor, the F80, it feels super controlled and focused. So the power is contained really, really well. It feels like it's under pressure, like it's on edge but it's so focused and contained that it just becomes this freaking weapon. It grips like crazy. We've got Pirelli P0s today, which you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of. But I think this car just works. It, it has so much grip. The M differential works so well. Uh, it, it just has... It has this focus and this containment and control. The F80 just didn't. I mean, that's, that's, that's not a whole lot of oversteer for that kind of power input. And it is so freaking impressive. I am absolutely blown away by the chassis on this car and the, just the power delivery. It, it just feels so aggressive while being so controlled uh, and it's just a feeling you hardly ever get it reminds me of a porsche 911 turbo s the new one it has that same like controlled craziness it's it's insane so we're going to select m2 and we're going for automatic for the gearbox now let's talk about we're going to hit m mode for the sport display let's talk about this automatic gearbox okay I'm going to floor it and let it shift for itself. You can hear the shifts, 150 milliseconds. Oh, okay, so apparently this is cool as well. Uh, 150 milliseconds for the ZF8 speed. I've talked about the gearbox a lot in my track review, but there is a slight delay in the shift, which the MDCT double clutch didn't have. That was a weird dip, all right. Um, it doesn't feel as aggressive as the MDCT, and I think it's a mistake by BMW. I think this, this M3 should have had the MDCT. Is this more suitable? Uh, we're getting a tire warning, don't, don't worry, uh, it's all good. But I think, yes, this car is, this automatic gearbox is more suited for daily driving. I think 95% of the customers are not going to care. But those times you do want that MDCT, you are going to miss it. You're going to wonder why they changed it. It is a very effective drivetrain though. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's, it's a really good drivetrain as well. But is it as exciting? Oh, those brakes. These M compound brakes are insane. They are really, really good. Um, but is it as exciting as an MDCT M3 F80? No. And I think that's a mistake. But, of course, the M3 is also available with a manual gearbox, a six speed, well, in most countries with 480 horsepower and I think that this M3 competition automatic and the M3 manual are going to feel like two completely different cars and I really like that because this as I said it feels like a weapon it feels like something really effective designed to 
fulfill one goal to have one purpose and it's incredible to drive the the way they've set up this chassis the way the drivetrain feels it's all incredible but i think that the manual is going to feel like the driver's car it's going to feel like it wants to it's going to feel like it wants to please you and i think that's a really important difference and i can't wait to drive our manual because this is such an impressive car but i think the manual is going to be uh the better one the more fun one to drive i am wondering if we're going to miss the 100 newton meters that is the difference between the automatic and the manual gearbox this has 650 as i said the manual has 550 so i'm curious to see if you're going to notice that uh, apart from the 30 horsepower difference of course uh, even though we've seen a couple of m3s on dinos and they have way more power than bmw claims so uh, i guess that's a tradition bmw won't get rid of uh, luckily okay let's go for manual and talk about the weight because at over 1700 kilos dry it is quite heavy and it is around 150 kilos heavier than the outgoing m3 f80 do you notice it not really um, as i said it was one of the things i was worried about but you don't really notice it because the engine the drivetrain is so effective it's so powerful and the way they've set up the chassis is is just incredible and i don't know how they are able to do this at bmw every time but the steering is is electronic the power steering but you have a connection to the car but you have a connection to the car that is unrivaled i mean you feel like your hands control the front axle and your foot controls the rear axle you feel everything that's going on on the rear axle through your seat through your butt it is so impressive and i think you know if you compare it to some of the competition alfa romeo giulia q it's getting a bit old audi rs4 not really comparable because it feels like just a completely different car it's it's nowhere near as aggressive and as focused as an m3 and the new mercedes amg c63 is probably going to have a four-cylinder uh, hybrid drive frame so i think within a few months or years bmw is going to have the kingdom to itself because this is really hard to match it is a ridiculously good car and it it has exceeded my expectations which were quite high <laughs> such a powerful car and if you look at the performance that's just confirmed because of course we've measured 100 to 200 kilometers an hour with our draggy gps performance box you can buy that directly underneath the video we measured it at 8.01 seconds which is seriously impressive that's faster than an Audi RS6, for instance. But if you look at the competition, an Audi RS4, 9.95, that's almost two seconds quicker. This car, almost two seconds, that's a completely different league. Uh, an Alfa Giulia Q, 8.5. Mercedes AMG C63, 8.7. So this car really delivers. And I mean, it exceeded my expectations. And they were quite high to begin with. So yeah, I know the front end is, is quite tough at first. Uh, the price has increased, the weight has increased, but the car as a whole is so much better than the previous one. And I think you're not going to care about any of the drawbacks when you drive this car because it, it just sells itself. It's insane. And with that, I'm going to end it. I hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button right in the middle. You can also check out this video of me driving this car on track. And you can also check out this playlist of POV reviews. Thanks for watching. See you at the next one. Bye.